to YouTube. You know? <laughs> but I'm always looking for something with a, something different, something so that we don't always come in here and do the same old, same old. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, yes, and that's exactly uh, what is, uh, that's the ticket. See, you're just not spiritual enough, Rob. Oh, boy. Okay, Lise, where's that microphone? Come on up here, Lise. Stand on up here. Here we go. Give it to him. Good morning, everyone. Hello there. We have so much fun stuff going on for our trunk or treat. And I have some guests here. Hey, hey, you guys. Why are you all dressed What's wrong up? Down there? I'm Dave. Trunk or treat. Are you going to the trunk or treat here at Church by the Sea? Oh, I'm so excited. We have our trunk or treat coming this Friday from 6 8 p.m. And what do you guys expect to be getting there? Candy. Oh, candy. Oh, my goodness. So that reminds me, we need lots of candy. If you have some and didn't bring any today, you can drop it off at the church office. And we need some trunks. So our trunk or treat is where you just back up your car, you open up your trunk, or you have your bed or your pickup truck, you decorate it with some Halloween theme or anything fun like that, and give out candy. And we have the fire department coming. So many fun things happening. Hey, you know what else we got? Pony rides. Don't you want to see a bumblebee riding a pony? Because I sure do. No candy pony rides, but we have real ponies, and it is going to be a lot of fun. And if you don't want to bring a trunk, then you could come do a game, just greet our friends and family and people from the neighborhood and welcome them to church. It is going to be a blast. If you do want to bring a trunk, be here by 5.30 set up. So I know that's a little early, but we want it safe for all our kids that start coming, sometimes about quarter to six. So. It is just going to be an absolutely fun time, right, guys? Are you excited about it? Oh, yeah. You see how excited they are? I think I need to wear my costume. So anyway, we look forward to any support. Come out, have fun, and just enjoy time with the kids. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. Better get that smoke bomb up. Help, help. Okay. Oh, you're just darling. I love it. Turning to the dark side. All right, Sharon, I'm going to start us off here. Okay. All right, dear people. Tell me something. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. How y'all doing anyway? I don't want to hear that. How y'all doing anyway? See? See what I mean? You doing all right? Do you have any prayer requests? All right, good. Just stand up and, uh, and turn around and face everybody and, and tell them what's on your heart. You had it all together, I know. Anybody else? Come on, talk. This is just, yeah, please.
Yeah, Sloan, get up here. Oh, time out. Wait. Okay, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Sloan, just, I know they can hear you, but just for you. Say it again. Yeah, she's um, 16. <laughs> oh. She recently, you know, she has a traumatic brain injury and all kinds of problems. Recently gets saved and came to the Lord. And everything was great. We had a double baptism. My son, my daughter got baptized on Easter. And now, you know, the evil forces have come back and stolen her away again. So pray for peace, okay? Yeah. She needs it. <laughs> uh, and I need it. Yes, Daddy needs it a lot. Who else wants to talk this morning? Come on now, this y'all. I never do this. So, come on. Hi, Lee. together in Fort Myers Beach a week before the hurricane. He was my best friend, my soulmate, my everything. He was diagnosed with cirrhosis last October, and um, the process took a little bit. I went, took care of him at home. We were going to the VA. He's a veteran, uh, and they had to put the needle in him to get the fluid out once a week. Uh -huh. the, uh, last Friday, I don't know why. I'm getting confused. Doesn't matter. Uh, but on that Friday, he had to go get pumped. He came upstairs to get his wallet because he was a little confused. And I said, honey, don't worry about your wallet. Just get down there to the wheelchair and we can fix you up. But my son was making fun, God, because um, he fell and hit his head right on the concrete. And I saw his eyes. They just went straight up. And it was gurgling. And I just had that feeling, whoa, where is this? I got hysterical. Thank God my son was there. He said it eight times. They said he needs to go to Bray Bayfront. Come to find out, it was uh, bleeding on the brain, multiple fractures of the skull. I had the choice of putting him into uh, neurology or up to hospice. Everything had to be done very quickly. Uh, he got his last rites by the police. Um, and he went to hospice. Um, and it was Thursday. And yeah, he was going into the Thursday. That's when it all happened. And then just this past Thursday, um, I was home. My best friend came from Fort Myers to be with me. Um, I said, I knew he was going to, something told me he was going to pass at 3 a.m., but I was home. And I called about 2 o'clock, and the nurse said he's doing okay. You know, he's transitioning into dying because they just, they, t they just give him the medicine. And, he, you know, he's at that point of no suffering. And, um, and he wasn't suffering. And by golly, the phone rang at 3.15 and said he had passed away and went to home with Jesus. And for some reason, my body physically told me, no, don't go up there. And I'd been told that by hospice, sometimes we want to be alone. I had already said all my peace with him. And um, I can't believe how good I'm accepting this. But he was my best friend, lover, companion, and he didn't have anyone in his life but me and uh, so now I must carry on and I know that I, from now from this day forward though I've done it a lot everything is in the Lord's hands and I give myself to God and he is going to lead me through this and I will make it that's a good word honey. that's a good word yeah oh honey that's all right because everybody else has to show up nobody shows up till 11:15. I am, you know, and it's not my fault. <laughs> Anybody else have something you want to share this morning? Yeah. Yeah, come on, Tammy. No, come on up here now. Stand here, Tam, so I can come back up and get it. I'd just like to ask you to pray for my nephew. He's um, got some mental disorders, and he's a severe oh, alcoholic. And he almost lost him a few months ago, and now I found out he just quit taking his medications again, and he's saying he doesn't need AA or anything, so we're real worried about him. So, if you could pray for him, appreciate it. What's his name, Tim? Rudy. 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 Who else has something to say today? I love it. What a good day. 
means we won't have a sermon today. <laughs> hey, y'all, I haven't been here in a while, but my neighbor, um, she had an accident, and she can't do anything but look her neck. She can't feed herself. She can't scratch. She can't do anything. So I'd like for y'all to pray for her. Her name is Tammy Kelly, and she's only about 48 or 49 years old. So she really needs prayer, Tammy Kelly. Tammy Kelly. Mm -hmm. She came once. I got her to come once. So. Thank y'all. Thank you. Anybody? Yes, yes. Tell them who you are, and you've never been here before. I am who I am. <laughs> My name's Gloria. I've never been here. I lived on the beach um, for a long, long time. I've um, always heard good things about this little church, and I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm going to say a praise in, um, instead of a, a prayer for her. Um, I just praise God for my mom. She is the strongest woman I ever known in my life. She has six children, and she is 86 years old, and just has so much willpower. She has lots of pain, but she just keeps going, and I just thank God that we have her every day. Amen. That's good. Anybody else want to share? Come on, we got. We we got. We absolutely. Do not have, y'all need to know this, if you, we do not have an order of service here at this particular time. It's catch as catch can. Hi everyone, my name is Diane. This Hi is Diane. <laughs> this is our second time here. Uh, I feel so blessed that we found this church. Um, Lee and I have, you know, we've been going through a lot of things too, but they're all changing in this past year, and I feel like when we found this church, it's a blessing. Um, and I just have to say, it was so cute when we first pulled up and we saw the cross. I said, Leah, take a look at that pretty cross. I said, look at the pretty bird that's, that Jesus is holding. And she said, Mommy, she said, I just have happy tears. Oh, and happy I tears. And I looked at her and she had happy tears. Yeah. So, it's like, so tears aren't always sad. No, they're so not. So I think we need to remember that tears can be tears of joy as well. And I've, I've never felt so blessed in my life. She's an angel in my life. She's beautiful, too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and she gets really happy when she gets these little bags. So oh, yeah. I'm real happy them. when they get them also. <laughs> whoever's making these, keep on. I'll even help if you'd like. So oh, thank you so thank much. You. God bless you. Thank you. Who else wants to talk? Come on, you've been crazy places. You want to talk? one thing that um, we can never be accused of here at Church by the Sea, and that's to be fake or phony. We're not religious. Have a deep, deep love for Jesus Christ. Only because of his incomprehensible, over-surmounting gracious love for us. So we come in here to worship the Lord. We come in here as a family. We come in here as a bunch of crazy beach people. We just come in here. It's a good place to be. People love you, and they're honest and sincere, so don't blow them off. Yeah, yeah, I know you said hi. No, they mean it, or they wouldn't say it. You know, when I do that, that's who you are. You're honest, you're real, and you're truthful. And I thank you for sharing today. A lot of you other have issues in your lives, and well, it's only the extroverts that talked out this morning. So you introverts, don't worry. <laughs> we'll snag you somewhere else, somewhere along the line. Let's join our hearts in prayer this morning. Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad you know what's going on. You know everybody's heart. You know all of the issues. You know what truly concerns us. 
You know what we're not uh, willing to talk out loud about? Some of it's filthy. Well, some of it is just so sweet and precious it's beyond comprehension, too. Well, it's a myriad of things. The good thing is that we can come in here and be honest and truthful. We can share our hearts and our burdens because in here you're not judged. Judgment for us was on the cross 2,000 years ago. It's over and done. Here we're holy. We're blameless. And we are beyond reproach because that's who you are have made us. You're so gracious and you're so good. All these sweet little baby girls that these mamas and daddies are hurting and pining over. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's a terrible thing to be an adolescent, especially in this world that we live in today. There seems to be no boundaries and everything is just chaotic. But we know that you are a great God who takes chaos and turns it into order. We can rejoice knowing that you're on the job. We can relinquish. We can back off. Because we're trusting you. Well, I tell you, Father, we have no, absolutely no guarantee we'll make it home today after we leave this house. Oh, death is all around us. You can smell the stench. Well, I'll tell you, we have hope because we have a promise. You'll never leave us or forsake us. Death has no sting. For even if we are absent from the body, we are home with you. Now, it's hard on the rest of us who are down here on earth and our loved ones go on ahead. So we pray for courage and confidence and strength to get through this old world, Lord. It's tough. Now, Father, every, and, and, and friends, you've got to know that I don't do this in this service, but I'm going to ask us to do the Lord's Prayer. So look up here and, and listen to me. The Lord's Prayer is not something that is memorized. It is not something we just say by rote. And then, okay, well, we did that. Now, okay, what next religious thing can we do? We don't do that. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a model prayer. This is actually a prayer that Jesus said, you want to use this as a schematic. You want to use this as a rule, a guide, a direction. You want to use this to pray. Now, we're going to do this collectively. And if you say, our debts will forgive us of our trespasses, I don't care. We're going to pray this together. And it's going to solidify us. It's going to unify us right now. This is your church. you got to hear that. Don't you walk in these doors and tell me, unless you're a guest, and I don't want to put that on you. But this is your, this is your church. It's where you hang out. It's your people. So they, well, they need to think like that. Oh, and we're tied to a traditional service that goes on earlier in the morning. They're part of them. They're part of us. I want you all to think like that. Whether you like that statue of Jesus or not. All right, now let's join our hearts now. And let's pray the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. Sharon, I'm going to, supposed to read the scripture, but I'm not going to. Take it away, Sean. What do you say? Stand and sing with us, please.
y'all doing three? We are doing Amazing Grace, and we are going to feature Frankie J on the trombone. Woo! That cut his dreadlocks off, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> but he looks great. And he's sharp dressed. And very young. But y'all may be seated. Anyone, whoever is the usher today, would you come on down as we receive the Lord's tithes and our offerings this morning?
that's great. That's okay. We got, we got more. <laughs> we got we'll more. Susan we got songs for days. We do. <laughs> songs for days. <laughs> one another with a smile this time.
Alrighty, let's go to work. What do you say this morning? <laughs> I don't think they're too eager for the sermon yet. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll be preaching. I'll be preaching right at you today, boy. All righty. Here we go. Let's go to work. What do you say? Oh, my. Did you feel a change in the breeze this morning? Well, we're moving into the high season, aren't we? You know what I mean. All the old snowbirds are starting to trickle back in a little bit. Not yet. That won't happen until November. But a few have already come in, so they're trickling in like that. It's high season. Let me tell you something else that's happening. New guests, new friends are coming by from the neighborhood. They say, oh, we passed by that church 50, 11 times and never knew anything about it. Well, then they come in and they find y'all and they never want to come back. I know. Well, they, you know, and you warm their hearts and, and it's good. I, I'm so happy that y'all are here to worship God, to sing, and boy, and express your love for the Lord. And then I hope and trust that you'll get a good word today that you can take home with you. So what I'd like for you to do is get out your dirty old Bibles the ones that you write all those notes in and color. And, because it's your Bible, and it's very special, and it's very precious. And uh, you can look in your bulletin uh, for the scripture reading today, and it'll be up here. And for you new folks today, this is what I always do. I always choose a topic. And the topic for today is I want us to be good hosts to the snowbirds, or old friends that are coming back, and then all of our new guests and our new friends from the neighborhood are coming to our church. 9.30 started to swell, and I started looking around talking about They were all, guess what, from the neighborhood. What's up with that? See there? And then, of course, we're known as the tourist church because folks come here, and when they're on touring and enjoying themselves, they come here. It's a good place to be. Now then, let's pick it up. So what I'm going to have to do, instead of having read the scripture to you, what I'm going to do now is I choose a topic, and then with that topic, I find a scripture verse that fits that topic, and I teach that scripture verse. You see, I don't uh, sit around here, and, and I don't even want you to care what I think or what my opinion is on anything. So when I give you an idea that we're going to discuss, I'm going to take the scripture, and I'm not going to interpret it for you. I'm going to translate it. So when you walk out of here, you can say, I understand what the Word of God said. Now, you'll interpret it through your grid because there's 50, 11 different denominations that are represented here. That's what I do. The only thing I do when you get ready to walk out of here is to ask yourself the old question, so what? See, I want you to evaluate the message, and then I want you to see, now, Lord, how can I apply that truth to my life this week if that's what's necessary? So we're going to pick it up. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. I want you all to understand, I've been talking to a lot of pastors and they ask us, they say, we've heard things about your church. And I'm going, well, yeah, sure you have. And they say, boy, we've heard good things. And the church is growing and the church is changing. And doing. How do you do that, Dave? And I said, well, it's not anything I do. It's just who they are. So today, don't you hear from me like the old preacher is going to go, mm, Frankie? Well, okay, for you, I will. All right. But, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not, now you better be like this. Uh-uh. Today, I'm telling you who you are. Oh, yeah, if you boys are wearing suspenders, you can snap them. See there? You ladies, I don't know what you ladies do <laughs> when you want to show. <laughs> I, I don't know if that'll preach. But, uh, okay, you just had to be there for that one. All right. This is who you are. This is who I tell people who you are. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Colossae. I want you to imagine that we just got a letter today from the Apostle Paul. He's writing to the church at Church by the Sea. Let's pick it up here in verse 12. So, as those, that's you, as those who have been chosen of God, oh, you're holy and beloved. Well, that's who you are. So as a result of that, I want you to put on, put on a heart. Put on a heart of compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. All right. 
Let's go to there. Chosen. Those of you that are here, born again, you have been chosen by the sovereign grace of God. By that, Scripture tells me that God has called you. God has elected you. God has predestined you, and you have surrendered your life in an act of obedience to that fact. And everyone who is in Christ Jesus, now listen to me, Christ doesn't come into your life and fix up the old person. That old person needs to be dead anyway. He comes in and he makes you born anew, born of the Spirit. He comes in and gives you new life, and therefore you are a new person. So everyone in Christ is a new person. You have a new life, a new meaning, and a new purpose. This new person in Christ, now listen, don't hear this as some old preacher trying to yell at you. Listen to me, what you are. He calls you holy, and he calls you beloved. Did you know the word beloved is only used for those who are in Christ? It's a very special word, a very special name. Oh, there you are. You know, she's mine. Oh, she's uh, beloved. Oh, he's so precious. Oh, I love him so. That's how God thinks about you. You're holy. Now watch this. You are a direct object of God's incomprehensible, unconditional, unchangeable love and affection. Thank you very much. How how can I go on? Well, I'm beloved, Dave. Well, I'm holy. I live under God. I've been set apart. Well, I know. Where's that boy from San Antonio? Well, I'll tell you, I have rodeoed and I have cowboyed all the way up from Amarillo down to El Paso. I rode my bicycle through San Antonio and went to the Alamo for the first time. Then I stopped at Judge Roy Dean near the Pecos. Watch who I am. But that old man, that old guy's dead and gone. Oh, I'm holy. I want to live for God. And whatever things I do, I want to do for him. I don't want to be the old Dave. The old Dave was terrible. He was a rambler and a wreck. I don't like that. And then he says, oh, but I'm beloved. And I'm sweet. And he says that about all of you. So since you are, now watch this. You've got that unchangeable, incomprehensible love and affection of God. I'll get that. Yes, Jesus. Move on. Yes, sir. It's almost time for dinner now, so move on. So chosen of God. Now I want you to, now listen, since you are born again, he says, this is something I need you to do. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the power and the strength and the ability and you have the mind of Christ. Therefore, you can do this. God's not going to do it for you. You've got to step out in faith and do it yourself. He says, I want you to put on. And that word put on in the Greek literally means to put on clothing. This morning, I noticed that all you ladies got all gussied up. And I noticed that some of you boys combed your hair this morning. Put on a little of that aqua velva. I know how you guys are. Well, that worked with the older crowd this morning. They knew what aqua velva was. You're to put on, watch this, you're to put on a heart. That's a way of life. That's an attitude and that's a behavior. Put on compassion and kindness. Well, that's godliness and goodness toward other people. Put on humility. Humility means I set aside myself and I consider others as more important. I look first to them, then to me. Put on gentleness. Now, gentleness doesn't, you ladies better get this right, because you fellas have all went in, oh, I got to be gentle. I got to be sweet. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. It doesn't mean that. It means. Self-control. It means power under control. You need to be gentle. You've got to get that power that you have under control. It's a willingness to suffer personal insult without retaliation. Mm. The 
because you're gentle, you need patience. Because in this world, you're going to be assaulted. You need patience. That's enduring troublesome situations with a hope of restoration. See what I'm saying? You're talking about your baby girls. You're talking about children. You're talking about loved ones, whatever. Boy, I'll tell you, we, we, we've got to endure each other sometimes. And we do that with a hope for restoration. Now, if these qualities, you have to understand, these qualities are absolutely necessary for the next verse, verse 13. He says, bearing with one another. You've got to put this on in order to bear with one another. There's a verse that explains this really well. Galatians 6 and verses 2 and 5 says, Bear one another's burdens, and each one will bear his or her own load. Bear each other's, watch this, this word burden means excessive burden. There's just absolutely no way you can do this by yourself. So we are collectively, as a church, as a body of believers, we are to bear, we have to help each other with these excessive burdens, and then you are to bear your own load. Your own load, actually, in the Greek. Okay, I'll translate it to the English and see. Load means backpack. I know. I shouldn't ever touch a woman's purse. Okay, that's good. Okay, this is what it means. A load is your own personal responsibility. Sean's going to carry this, not me, Sloan. All right. See, now then, an excessive burden is, Sloan, get up here and help me pick up the piano and, and let's move it. Okay. See that? So we're to help each other with excessive burdens, but we are to be responsible for our own. So watch this. Here's where the church oftentimes gets in trouble. When you treat your own load, your responsibility, as if it were an excessive burden, and you become a burden to others, don't you? You've got to take personal responsibility. Or if you treat your own, these excessive burdens, as if they were loads, then you become a burden to yourself. And you've got to ask for help. Nobody can do it by yourself. Every believer in Jesus Christ is indwelled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, number one, that's to give you that, the beginning the strength, the confidence, uh, the ability to do whatever God wants you to do. But then he says, boy, but I need to collectively have you all together because not all of you have the same spiritual gifts, talents, skill sets, and abilities, right? You don't. But together, all we do, well, we can do so much. Oh, I love that. Verse 13 says, now, bearing with each other simply means that on occasion... We may be sinful. It means to miss the mark. We blow it. Forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, mm -hmm, so also you should forgive. Instead of complaining and blaming other words, it says, forgive, be gracious, be like Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ took away all of our sins and I'm going to mess with the word iniquity and call it, uh, he's taken away all of our inequities. That means all the things that we don't measure up in. Well, on the cross, I'm going to tell you, judgment for you Christians, well, that was dealt with 2,000 years ago on the cross. What you couldn't do, that was your excessive burden. Jesus took that personal load and responsibility upon himself. He got beat up down on the killing floor. They took him up, hung him up on that tree. He died. They put the man down in the grave. He stayed down there for a few days, and he overcame it. And he stood up and he said, Boy, where's your sting, old death? He overcame death. And now he sits at the right hand of God the Father. Boy, that's our judgment. Ain't no judgment for you. Oh, yeah, one of these days... God's going to get you to his throne. He's going to put you up here on a big jumbotron and every thought and every word and everything. I heard some preacher preach on that last week. I wanted to get up and punch him in the nose. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not saved. Sure, you're sitting there saying, no, I'm good enough for God. I can do whatever I want and he'll accept it. Well, good luck in the horse you rode in on, son. The boy for the rest of us. Oh, no. No, it's what Christ did for us. So when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, 
There is rewards, there is love, and we are ushered into the paradise of God. Oh, I like that. All right, let's keep going. I'm starting to preach, and that's we're getting in trouble here. Now then, verse 14 says, Beyond all these things that Dave has just talked about, the fact that you're chosen by God, you're holy, you're blameless, you're born again, you're a new person, you're compassionate, humble, and forgiving, that means you are part of the family of God. So, moving on now, we have a much more greater ministry. And he says, you have to choose family of God. Since you're all these wonderful things that God has made you, I want you to put on, come on now, get dressed, I watched a lot of football yesterday. Suit up. Does that make sense? Suit up. you got to get in the game. I need you to choose love. Love is the perfect bond of unity. I'm going to give you three words for love in the Greek. We only have one word, love, in the English. Okay, see if this makes any sense. I really love my wife. Y'all dig it? And I just love Bonnie's beans and weenies she's going to cook for dinner. Does that make sense? Good God, no, that doesn't make sense. Because sometimes we don't even know what love is half the time. But the Greeks had it right. Here are three words they use. I want you to put on agapo love. That's the unconditional love of God in Christ. Unconditional. Yeah, Dave, but you don't know. You stand there and tell that to Jesus. Somebody stepped on my toe, Jesus. Oh, yeah? And you can't forgive that? Let me tell you what I do. Unconditional love. And then I want you to love with phileo love. That's brotherly, sisterly love for one another. And I want you to love with stergo. Stergo is love that you have for a family. That's the love that you have for your special, wonderful little family. And then the love we have for one another as a family here at Church by the Sea and as a family of the, of the church universal that we have for one another. Love for each other is the adhesive. It's the glue. It's the cement that bonds our church together. Now then, picking it up here in verse 15. There's something else we have to do. Now, I need you to do this. Here, watch Paul. He says, now, church, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Now, some of you right here have got to get this. How many, don't raise your hand. How many of you are struggling with peace right here? Well, I've heard some of you already. Hey, come on. I'm struggling with peace. Now listen. Let the peace of Christ... Now, the word peace in the Greek literally means to weave, to strap together, to rope you up, to tie you up. He says, let the peace of Christ, the fact that you are woven together with Christ, and there's absolutely nothing between you and God, For the closer you are connected and strapped to Christ, the greater will be your peace. You'll have safety, you'll have security, you'll have stability, you'll have strength to face whatever comes your way today. Now get that, people. I don't have any peace, Dave. Well, tell me about your relationship with God. Well, I don't give a snap of my fingers about him. Let me tell you what happened to me, and I'm mad at him. I think I'll hold a grudge against him. You may not say that like that. I say that because I'm from West Texas. But you may think something like that. Well, if that was, God really loved me, why did he allow me to do this or have this happen in my life? Well, that's baloney. See, he does love you dearly. It's not that he leaves us, we leave him. I tell you, let the peace of Christ, boy, the fact that Jesus Christ has, has welded us together with him. So the way we have peace is that we stay close to him. We're going to talk about how you do that now. Uh, Continuing on, let the peace of Christ, watch this, rule your hearts. The word rule in the Greek means referee or uh, a referee or umpire. That's what I mean. It literally means to be governed by peace. 
how are you, how, how we are ruled in the United States by a bunch of laws, right? We follow the laws. And that's what it's saying here. Here's the law. Here's the rule. You have to have your life must be ruled and governed by the fact that you're really close to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say, if you want peace, if you want more peace, then you need more governing. Oh, got that? More closeness with Christ. The word submit, I want you to it'd be like, you have to submit your life to Christ. Well, you're talking about submit, Dave. The word submit doesn't mean obey. You ladies, don't you ever let some stupid preacher like me step here and say, well, you better submit. You hear that? But rather you say to husbands and wives, you are to submit one to the other. Well, what are you talking about, Dave? The word submit means fall under the plan of God. That's all submit means, a military word. Fall under the plan. Well, what's the plan? Well, I've got to stay close. She's going to stay close. He's going to stay close. We're going to stay close. We're strapped to him. Boy, he's going to govern us. He's going to rule us. This is what's going to go on in our lives. I like that. So what we do, we don't kind of go out and make our plans and ask God to bless it. You lose. Thanks for playing. But rather what we want to do is place our plans before the Lord and then we want to ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? When do you want me to do it? How do you want me to do it? Where do you want me to do this? I'm yours. I'm following you. I'm staying close to you. Next, as Christ's love is woven into our hearts, we're bonded with God and we're bonded with each other. And I said this, and this is true. There is, the Holy Spirit is doing a great work here at Church by the Sea because there's real, a tremendous amount of unity. Well, you're talking about unity, Dave. I tell you, now I'm not a soothsayer and I'm not one of those genies in a bottle that can read your mind. And some of you are really struggling with terrible issues. I understand that. And some of you are not. And listen, this is what I've discovered, that as I've watched you this morning, there's joy, there's love, there's friendship, and there's fellowship. That's what I wrote in here as I watched you guys come in here and interact with you. There's joy, there's love, there's friendship, and there's fellowship. We have two services here at Church by the Sea. Don't you go to that first one. It'll make you sick. Well, I got to get up there and wear the robe. I got to stand up here. Look very dignified. Use when I say about the Lord's name and God. Say. Now then, at nine thirty, I said, "Whatever you do, don't you go to that eleven o'clock service. It'll make you sick. Those people wear flip flops in there, you know." And. Uh, let's see. We're one church. I don't give a rat's ear. I've been hearing pastors say, well, you've got to dress a certain way and act a certain way, and I say, say what? No, oh, I'll tell you. No, yeah, I'll tell you. You come as you are. There's no dress code for God in here. Well, you come and relax and be who you are. Be what you are. All right, very good. That's enough of that day. Verse 16. Now then, let, the word of let, let, in the Greek, is allow. Allow the word of Christ to richly dwell within you with all wisdom, with all teaching, and admonishing one another. I like the word admonish. You men may identify this with me. Bonnie admonishes me often and frequently. Because in the Greek, the word admonish literally means to put sense into the head. Are you with me? If you can't say amen on that one, okay. See, so admonish one another, not with your personal opinions, but with a word of truth. You see, the word of Christ, the scriptures, are the revealed, inspired word of God, filled with godly truth and wisdom. And the best way that you absorb the living word is not by going to Bible class, is not by coming and listening to sermons. Sometimes that would be the worst thing you could do. You say, what you talking about, Dave? I'm telling you this. I'll sit up here, and I've already given you some Greek words, haven't I? You know, I had a lady yesterday come in the gym, and she says, hey, Dave, you know a couple of weeks ago you preached on this? and I got it. I didn't know that. Well, now watch this. See, she got that word, right? Whatever it were. It gave her a little bit of knowledge. And then she went home, and she sat all by herself. 
And then she has the Word of God in her lap. And boy, there she is, and there's the Holy Spirit with her. It's not by coming here and someone thumping at you like this. I tell you, boy, it's a, well, that preacher, he said something there. That was interesting. I wrote that down. Thou didn't you get alone with the Lord. And I'm telling you, you can't get strapped up to God when you're busy with the radio on and children running around. And, and I don't know how you really in this world in time have any time to yourself. But you've got to get that time to yourself. And then sit there and say, I don't understand. Look, oh, oh, now you're preaching me. Holy Spirit's preaching me. Oh, that's, okay, that makes sense. That's what I need to do, yes. That's how you absorb the word of truth. Moving right along, Dave. So how does that word, implanted, express itself? You express it, as it says, through singing with joy in your heart. You've got to feel the word of God. It's not enough to have intellectual knowledge stuck up there in your head. Oh, boy, I feel it. Man, it feels good. Boy, as soon as Sean started singing, she calls the song fierce, I call it hurricane. And, and she goes, you, you, can't you see her? She kind of looks like, who's the blind guy that plays the piano? Ray Charles. All right, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, she, she does, but she can see. And you can feel it, and you can sense it in her, can't you? I know, that's why we love you to come, because you, you can see that. Boy, singing with joy in your heart. Singing with psalms. The psalms were not to be studied. They were to be sung. They were written as lyrics to music. That's the songs. And then through hymns. Don't you open that hymn book in here. And through spiritual songs or contemporary songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart for God. For there is no real worship without adoration in our heart. And boy, that worship comes out as we sing, as we begin to feel. All right, very good. Verse 17. I thought you'd never get there, Dave. So whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say it through Jesus Christ. It's only in Christ that we have access to the Heavenly Father. It ain't Buddha. It's not some guru. It's not some other religion. You know why I'm going to tell you that? Because in every other religion, they all tell you something you got to do in order to get to heaven. For the Christian, for the believer, it has nothing to do with me. It's everything what God has done for me. And all I have to do is receive that gift. He gives us access to the Father. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. This will change your life. Whatever things you feel, think, say, or do, if you cannot communicate your true thoughts, feelings, and actions without the presence of Jesus Christ, don't do it. Well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Is Jesus there? Is his truth there? No, don't think it. Whatever you think, that's what you're going to feel. What you feel, that's what you're going to do. Can Christ be there? Oh, yeah. I can say that. I can do that. I can think that. That's truthful. That's right. No, I don't have it all together. That's right. And Jesus says, but I do. Sum it all up. In Jesus Christ, you have been chosen of God. You are holy. You are beloved. He says, I want you to let the peace of Christ unite you. Sometimes, dear friends, we've got to have that peace to unite ourselves. We're so busted up and broken inside. Some, you know what I'm saying? Unite us here. Unite us with our loved ones and unite us with others. And then the word of Christ has to inspire us. And then the singing of Christ fills us and pours out of us. And then we are to put on the clothing of Christ Jesus, which is his character. And then we will be gracious hosts, and we will be ready to receive our new friends from the neighborhood and our old friends, the old snowbirds who are coming down. And we will be ready to, uh, yes, be wonderful hosts to those who enter our doors and who enter our life. And I say amen to that. And everybody says, it's about time. Come on. All right, stand up. Let's close in prayer. and Let's go to dinner. Heavenly Father, how wonderful and good it is that you orchestrate your service and man doesn't. Now bless each and every person here. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your wisdom. Fill them with your encouragement. Strengthen them. 
Give them the power of Christ to do whatever it is that they have to go through in this stinking, dirty old world. Fill them with hope and peace. The Lord loves you. Depart in peace. The Lord loves you. Amen.